So did I have the details right about the new format in October, Sebastian? Tuesday, Tuesday mornings, are you looking it up? Mm -hmm. So, so here we go. Um, from October, we are going to have a new space on Tuesday, every first and third Tuesday of each month, um, just to keep going with this space of sharing. And then we will keep going with the Hour of Grace on Wednesday. Um, we are not planning on changing the time uh, and the day for the hour of grace, so we can keep with, um, with the program of sharing and extending love. And this is going to be organized by uh, our foundation, so others can create their own groups because we are growing all over the world and we are having much more people and, you know, brothers and sisters um, requesting for time and space and we have our limitations. So uh, we need to spread this all over the world. So I really thank you uh, very much, Susan, for the coordination um, you were doing and for everything. And I also thank everyone for sharing this manifestation. Um, every expression of love from you is very important for me. So um, I really take it in my heart and I really thank you. Um, thank you very much. I just wanted to um, also thank um, Alice for your friend, for your book. I have your book. It's a lovely expression of Christ. And when I was reading uh, the book, I remembered when Jesus explained to me that these kind of manifestations are going to be more extended every day all over the world. This is the new. The new is love. The new is the knowledge of who we truly are, as you said, Alice. So I thank you very much. And I thank everyone who sends um, presents, different kind of presents. I have all there here the CDs and your piano uh, rod, which I love. And I also have some other artists uh, sending um, presents. And I really want to um, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, because this is all what we need to express love, to give love. Every expression of love is complete and perfect. So I really thank you very much, Susan, and thank everyone for your presence, your patience, and your love. And most important for me, for your openness to receive, to receive the truth, to receive this manifestation, and to share this with others. We all need to listen to the voice of Christ. So thank you very much. We are going to keep going, sharing um, as much as we can. So we can have this space on Tuesdays. Uh, we also have the space on Wednesday for the Holy Hour of Grace. And we can create new spaces. Um, this is, I don't want to say mission because there are no missions, but 
um, this is what I love to do, to spread this manifestation all over the world. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Sebastian. So I was just um, saying to, I don't know if everyone had arrived when I was saying that this was an open meeting, there's no theme. And if anyone's got something they'd particularly like to read from one of the books, Choose Only Love, something that perhaps has really touched their heart or, and I am, um, and Lourdes has said there is something she'd like to um, perhaps read and certainly ask a question about. So do you want to start Lourdes? You're muted, Lourdes. That's it. Okay, it is book number five and it is on page 227, chapter 19, Light of Love, Light of Life. And uh, I just had a question about this reading, Sebastian. So perhaps you can elaborate. Um, so is someone else going to join in the reading? Well, what I suggested for today was that people just read some, because I didn't know what people would be bringing, that you just read one or two paragraphs. Okay. If you can pick All up right. a couple that might be relevant to your question, Lourdes. If that's All right, possible. sure. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yes. So at the bottom of page 227, the last paragraph, it says, a new Holy Spirit from which the divine emanates has arrived to earth. Dance to the rhythm of its breeze. Sing a new song in harmony with the sweetness of love. The delights of God spill over the earth like morning dew that descends from heaven, waters the grass, and returns to its holy dwelling. Then on the following page, uh, in the second paragraph, it says, your spirit has been reborn from on high with new treasures and lives in the land where it will dwell until the end of time. That Holy Spirit is yours that only you can give is the gift I have been speaking of so often as the reason for your life. Giving your Holy Spirit is your goal, your destiny, your joy. Begin now to become aware of the spirit of love you are called to give. Give it so that earth stays forever united to heaven and, to heaven, and souls find the rest they need. You are Holy Spirit. So this was my question, Sebastian. Uh, when um, it is mentioned about this is a new Holy Spirit, you are Holy Spirit. Are we talking about the Christ within us, the Christ that we have been talking about as when we say I no longer live, but the Christ lives in me? Is this what we are talking about here? Or I, I guess that was my question, if you can elaborate, since it's saying this is a new Holy Spirit. So that's my question. Is it the same as to what, in other words? Thank you. Thank you, Lourdes, for your beautiful presence and question. Um, so practice. Um, This chapter is so important um, because it gives us the opportunity to understand that we are living the universal Pentecost. This is a time in our universal consciousness in which the Holy Spirit is being given to every single aspect of the creation as never before. The first best concept was 2000 years ago, and it went from the sacred heart of Jesus to the apostles at that time. And that was a manifestation of what is happening now. 
Now we are in the time of a new consciousness, a consciousness which is based on living in the direct relationship with God, which means living by the truth. And the truth is that we are an extension of God. So the Holy Spirit, Christ and God are one and the same at the same time. So God is the source of who we are. Christ is who we are. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of who we are. So this, when we say we are the Holy Spirit, we are saying that we are the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was the gift from Christ to us. The Holy Spirit is what gives us the spirit. We have a spirit, that's why we can do things with the spirit. That spirit now is the Holy Spirit. So that chapter is telling us to accept and inviting us to accept that the Holy Spirit was already given to us. So that is our spirit. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit as Jesus Christ, the same Holy Spirit as our Immaculate Mother Mary, and the same Holy Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is incarnated in our humanity, in Christ, in the Christ that we are. So this chapter invites us to accept this, and to start extending the holiness that we are. We are holy because we have in our self, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the true spirit of who we are. And Christ is our identity, which goes together with the Holy Spirit. We cannot be Christ without being at the same time, the Holy Spirit. And we cannot be Christ and the Holy Spirit if at the same time, we are not one with God. So that's the Holy Trinity that is incarnated into what we are. We are the human expression of the Holy Trinity. And I hope this answer um, Thank you, Sebastian. Yes, once you said the, when the word Pentecost, then I understood what, uh, what you were saying, because I, I was aware about how you know, it happened on the apostles. I'm watching this, um, uh, I don't want to say series or seasons or something about this, uh, the life of Christ, and it is titled The Chosen. So it's kind of like... Um, I never knew so much about the apostles. So anyway, this add more light to, to what I have been watching with those videos. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you very much for, for that question. And I love you too. And um, I think it could bring light to this dialogue. Um, if I explain the image that was given to me to write this chapter, there was the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, and from the center of his heart, the, there was a sacred light going from him to every single soul, from, to every single human being, and to every single creature and aspect of the creation, every single star, flower, animal, trees, and human bodies we are receiving the grace that is now coming from heaven to the earth. We cannot see that rain of grace and blessings, but our heart can feel that. Um, and in fact, the earth was never before as much close as it is now between creation and the creator. And that is because the Holy Spirit
think you've frozen, Sebastian. I don't know if you can, did you hear that? I think you froze for a moment there, Sebastian. We're back now, I think. You mean I was frozen or? Well, you were for me, yeah. Everyone's nodding, okay. yeah. Okay. Just for a few minutes, so. Maybe the Holy Spirit wanted me to be frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we wanted to hear about the symbol you got. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you didn't hear that. I can repeat it. I'm sorry. Um, there was the, the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, and from the center of his heart, there was a universal light going from his heart to every single aspect of the creation, including every single person and every single animal, flowers, stars, and everything that was created. Um, and this is what is happening now. We are receiving that rain of graces and blessings from the sacred heart of Jesus. And that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, given, is being given to us. And we cannot see that with our physical eyes, but our soul and our consciousness can receive that. That's why we are experiencing such a great transformation in the world. In fact, we are in the time in which the earth and heaven are more close than ever before. And that is because of the Holy Spirit is given to us. So it is a literally rain of the spirit into us. We just need to close our eyes and to be in silence and we will feel it for sure. And no matter whether our humanity can feel it or not, everything will be transformed into light. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. I look forward to the rain. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything they particularly would like to share as a reading? I mean, and then we can, yeah, Alice. Well, well, I yes, I do. I'm actually still reading. I'm not even halfway through book five yet because I came to it later. Um, and I'm absolutely amazed with chapter eight, uh, Mother and You. And um, if you've got it there, it's on page 82. And re just reinterpreting what we've always thought was a divisive separation between us and the divine. It turns out that it's a matter of perception as everything else. So I, it's the most beautiful part um, here about the space. Um, which we're invited to call a distance and not a separation. And it, it turns the, the whole thing around it's so beautiful. Um, which, which shall I read the bit in question or not? Yes, please, uh, yes, please Rod. Okay. It's been said that separation is an illusion, that what's separated from God is not true. And yet, you felt separated from everyone and everything. So, what happened? If a child does not separate from their mother at birth, it cannot know itself in its fullness. Separation need not be a cause for anger, belief in sin, disunity or fear. <clears throat> that there is distance between one and another does not mean that separation is bad. Let us examine the distance between a child and their mother after birth. <clears throat> the distance between two points is the space between them. The points are also linked by what separates them. God both unites and separates. On the plane of being, it's important to understand that no one can be aware of their self and know their self in the fullness of what they are without there being a distance 
from that with which they relate. Um, can I go on or, or not? Can I? Yeah. You are. God is. Christ is. Imagine your being as a point and your source as another point. Or if you prefer, imagine being a point emerging from within the point in which it was generated. That is from God. Now imagine how that point, conceived in the bosom of the source of life, begins to distance itself from that which gave it existence. Let us look at the space between the points. There you are, there is God, and there is the distance between you. You conceived of that space as proof of separation or disunity and made a series of interpretations in your mind that induced fear and guilt. You know the rest of the story. <clears throat> However, what you have not done is allow God to reveal what was in that space. What was it that separated you? What is it that separates you from everything? And what I now would have you know is that the distance that exists between God and you is Christ. To me, that is so wonderful and revelatory and allows our soul, our very soul to relax if a soul can do that. I remember long years ago, we learned that um, another word for Christ was the space between the atoms. And, and, and the whole concept as laid out in the Course in Miracles about the supposed separation that never actually occurred. It occurred in awareness and, and we learn now from this beautiful text that once again it's a matter of interpretation, it's a matter of perception, and we can look at it in an entirely different way. And the way that came to me was even the, the, the common way of a doctor and a patient. A patient goes to a doctor, and it's no good if that space between them is filled with emotions or, or what is not necessary. It needs to be filled with what is necessary to be filled with. And a very small example of that. And then I thought, wow. You know, it's just, and, and he goes on to say, the seas unite the land and everything that we <laughs> have hitherto thought of separation is actually joining. And I love that and it's meant an enormous amount to me and I couldn't resist sharing it. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Really lovely piece. Does anybody else have either? Sorry, did you have something to say, Sebastian? We lost you for a moment there, didn't we? No, I just wanted to say, um, I, I'm sorry. Um, I had a problem with the network, so I just changed the, the connection. Oh, I just wanted to see. Good. Good to have you back. Does anybody else have something they'd like to read or we can just go to questions, discussion? Um. If, if I may, just to maybe build on what Roger was talking about, this, this, this space between the atoms. Um, this last couple of weeks, I, I've been really kind of focusing on that same, same thing. Um, this, this, I, I don't know, I, I guess I've, I've heard it called Christ's vision, but looking at something and and trying to feel it's, it's so hard to put these kinds of things into word into word but, but looking at something and, and trying to Im image or imagine a communion taking place and and there is a there is an internal shift that I feel when that takes when, when I do that and and it I can see it being kind of an addictive process because it, it, it almost takes your breath away. 
Um, yeah, and I, I don't know what else to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, David. I'm still pondering what, is it Roger? Rod. Rod? Rod. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the name very well. The Course of Miracles tends to look at the separation as a result of a tiny mad idea that's all a mistake. So is there a conflict there? And if so, how do we resolve it? I don't know the answer. I'm just now coming to grips with what which you read, which I really loved and which I would prefer as the truth from what I understand in the Course of Miracles, because the Course of Miracles seems to think of the separation as a mistake that needs, or, or an uh, error that needs to be healed. I don't know. That's Maybe, why uh, I, sorry, that's why I regard that's why I regard this as um, like, like, like the windows in Chartres Cathedral I've referred to before, where the evangelists stand on the shoulders of the prophets of the Old Testament, and because they see further. Uh, and, and, you know, this is so, I mean, the course is a wonderful mind training. But this is soul training, and this is training how to live as Christ. This book is, how, is, 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 is teaching us the mechanics of how to, to live that Christ that lives through us now. And it's not quite such a straightforward mind training text, not to me. And I think that's, you know, that's why we're studying this now. Uh, we, I mean, we were all core students. We know the course and we love the course. But there's a reason why this has come into our, our lives now. And to me, it's like, it's like that analogy of a, um, a manifestation, in this case, that just sees further and allows us to very lovingly and compassionately to, to step forward in our soul development. That's why I think, that's why I think we're reading this and, and, and not the course. Uh, between it actually <laughs> solves some other problems too because in the course of miracles if if i separated from god by a tiny mad idea and that's an error that needs to be healed then a, a perfect god has created a son who's done something kind of stupid it seems like and then you've got a, a problem of how does a perfect God create a holy son that would do something so stupid? Mm. And this solves the problem. And also elsewhere in a message from Mother Mary, she said it was, I can't remember the words, but it was um, a, a mistake on the soul level. I think that's what she said. A, mis uh, uh, um, a misperception of the soul. I'm sorry, what was the misperception of the soul? Um, the tiny mad idea. Okay. Uh, you mean it's a misperception that it is a tiny mad idea? No. Um, <laughs> it was on the soul level. On, on a, on a, on, oh. It was taken, I, I, I can't quite quote it, maybe Sebastian can remember what that was. I don't know. And thank you, Rod and George and David, for bringing these to our attention. Um, I think it's very important to understand that our mind is so big, so we can approach the same thing from different point of views, from different perspectives. And so most of the time, we try to say whether this belief is right or wrong or true or false. But the answer is that it is both. 
And the reason why it is both is because it's all about from where you are making the interpretation. So the point is not whether one book is right and the other book is wrong. Both are right because both come from the Holy Spirit and both are telling us the truth. We can see that very clearly in the Bible, if we read something from the Old Testament and then we read it something similar in the New Testament, we can feel that there are some contradictions. But the question is, how can the truth have contradictions? So there might be something behind those words in which we can be united by the truth. So every time that we go into the realm of beliefs, it's very important to know that beliefs are always a place where we can create division. And that's what our thinking mind is accustomed to doing, to create divisions, saying whether this is true or this is false. So um, we are making comparisons. And that's the way of thinking of the, of the old. The old is always looking for comparisons comparing books, comparing beliefs, comparing everything. But now we are in a new time, which is the time of union, because it's the time of love. So both expressions are right. So our, challenging, our challenge is to find the connection between both expression of the truth, even though we see them as completely different. And in this case, that point of union is, is here. I, I'm going to tell you where is this point of union, but this can be um, found in every single manifestation of the truth in which we see in the surface contradictions, but they are not contradictions. In this case, what our what, what Christ is doing in Choose Only Lab is to go deeper into the understanding of separation. It's all about levels of the truth, of how we go deeper and deeper into the, the ocean of the truth. So a Course in Miracle tells us that separation is something, is an error, because at that time, our thinking mind was so attached to the belief that we were separated. And if you believe that you are separated from God, you are going to create a reality with the, the effect of that separation. It's not about whether that is true or not, but it's all about whether that is true for you. If I believe that I'm an independent person, that I don't need God and I don't need anyone, I will become an isolated person and all my reality is going to show me that isolation reality. But not because of the truth, but because of what I believe. So A Course in Miracle is trying to help us to be, to be detached from our, you know, fixed idea of being separated from God. After we have walked through the process of questioning that belief and opening our mind to a new idea, then Choose Only Love comes to tell us about the separation from a different perspective. And what it's saying is that there cannot be an error in the creation. You are not an error. I'm not an error because God cannot make mistakes. 
So separation was an option. It's an option that you can take. No one is, you know, pushed to love. That's why we are called to make a choice. But here are those who already have chosen love. That's why we are touched by choose only love because it's the manifestation in our consciousness about the fundamental option that we already did. When we decided by love, when we choose only love, and this is something that we all have done, I mean, all of you who are here have done, you can understand that separation is not a mistake. It's not an error. It's just a way of knowing yourself, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to live by the truth. You can be at the same time having distance from God and live by the truth. Because the distance between you and God is not something that makes you disconnect from him. It's just something that we need in order to know who we are. Like a person in the family, we need distance from our parents and our sons and daughters in order to you know, know ourselves and to have our I, our true identity. In that way, separation is just giving us the opportunity of knowing who we are. If we understand separation from this perspective, separation is not going to be seen as an error. It's going to be just simply as what it is. A mean, an instrument to know myself as what I am. So I can express my own identity, my uniqueness. There cannot be uniqueness without distance. And we have our uniqueness. So both are telling the truth. Both expression of those beliefs that you mentioned, George, are expressing the truth. But it depends on our interpretation of what we believe. The problem is not the separation. The problem is our fixed idea of being separated from God. So to become an independent person. Does it make sense for you? I'm wondering if the problem is just believing that there's an error. Exactly. But, you know, Something that um, it, it, in this case, Crossing Miracle or other books are doing is to let us know that that is what we used to believe at that moment. Because sometimes we believe things and we are not aware of that. So it's very important to understand that those books or any manifestation from the spirit comes, comes to us at the right moment when we need that and we are ready to do something with that. There is a reason why that book came to you and now this book comes to you. At the moment in which you were so attached to the idea of an error with the separation, you needed that book. So our discernment is whether we need it now or not. And I believe this is very important because we can get confused if we use so many books, so many different expressions of the truth because we are not understanding sometimes that some manifestations were needed at some moment, but no longer needed because we are in you know, evolution. We are moving, we are growing. And when we are, you know, kids, we go to the kindergarten. But when we are adults, we don't go to the kindergarten. We don't want to go there, even though we, it was needed and beautiful and useful for at that time. 
now is not necessary and is not needed. So I truly invite you to take away whatever you have learned, to take everything that you have received away and to go to your heart and to open to the new. This is the only way to open to the new, to become empty of what we learn, to become empty of what we believe. So the Holy Spirit can give us the, the truth in the present for me, because that's the only important. And finally, to talk about these differences between ideas and beliefs, it's important to say that one of the things that we have to change in our perception, in our beliefs, is the idea of having one universal truth for everyone. Because you are the truth. So there are so many expressions of truth as many human beings are and as many aspects of the creations are. The idea of having one truth expressed in one way for everyone and for everything is simply not true. So the truth can be expressed through you in a different way than from me and in a different, in a different way from other person because we are different in one level, because we are unique. So the question is never whether one truth, one belief, I'm, I'm sorry, the question is never whether one belief is true or not, but whether that truth is true for you at this present moment. If it is true for you, you are going to live like, you know, connected with that truth. If you believe that you are separated from God, everything in your life is going to be an expression of that belief. But if you believe that you are one with God because you have your source and that source cannot be disconnected, then your, your life will change into the unity and you will have the experience of the unity, the experience of the oneness of the universal consciousness, which in other words means you will experience the truth of who you truly are, which is union. You know, I wanted to share that um, as being a long time student of A Course in Miracles, and it was a blessing to me because I have always had a, a analytical mind and it kind of answered and put to rest many questions I had. But looking back, as I, I realized I studied A Course in Miracles, it, it, it was mind training and, and often I felt in reading it, you know, I needed to do something. I needed to figure things out. And since discovering Choose Only Love, I approach the reading and study differently and don't really approach it thinking I need to figure anything out. And almost I, I'm, I'm seeing myself use the ancient term Lectio Divina, the divine reading to where I'm not reading it analytically. I read a passage and sit with it and do nothing. Just let, just let its words wash over my heart and take away the need to act and to do something. And that's why I have all the books, but I am still on book one because I am reading it so slowly and so much letting it seep in that I'm even thinking before I start book two, I'm actually going to go through book one again and do the exact same thing. Just literally let it soak in without needing to respond in any way. And that has been extremely powerful to me, transformative, and taken away the need to figure what's right and what's wrong and what I did and didn't do. And, and it lets the love of Christ just so profoundly change me. 
so I just wanted to share that experience for what it's worth, uh, because it's 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 really transformed my life in just the months that I've been experiencing and sitting with Choose Only Love. And I thank you very much, Joe, for your words. And I um, wanted to share with everyone that there is a chapter, while I was listening to you, Joe, I remember that there, there is a chapter in book one, um, page 127, which talks about stop thinking. And it's a very interesting chapter because Christ invites us in several moments during Choose Only Love to stop thinking, to, which, which means, you know, being open to the new. So what we learned in the past was not a mistake, was what we needed at that moment. That was a true blessing to receive that at that moment because that was the way of we understand in that uh, moment. And um, because, you know, our consciousness ne needed that. The same happened with other beliefs. All beliefs that we have as manifestation in the world are wonderful. They, they have a purpose and we have to embrace them. But in order to keep growing and moving ahead in this spiritual path, um, somehow we need to take away what, what we have learned. Um, and finally, it's interesting when Jesus says that this is not, um, this is not said in, in Choose Only Love, but it, in, in the next book, which is going to be published after, um, after Choose Only Love, which is called Trilogy of the Heart. Some of that is being shared in our blog. Um, there is a chapter in there in which Jesus says that this is not about thinking in a new way or having new ideas. This is about stop thinking, to stop using the mind as we used to use that, to understand and accept that we don't need to think. So he can think in us, which is a tremendous transformation because we are so accustomed to think about everything because we, we believe that that is a way of, you know, uh, having success in, in this world. Um, but in terms of accessing to the truth, we cannot think. The truth is going to be revealed to us. So the invitation is to um, become empty so we can allow the mind of Christ to think in us, so we can receive his thoughts in our mind rather than generating and producing our own thoughts, which at the end of the day, George, that is what separation means for a course in miracle. It's not the separation of our being, it's the separation of our thoughts. If, if we think without God, then we are acting in separation, but it is perfectly possible to think in harmony with God. So the mind of God expresses itself in our mind because we have not been created to think. We have been created to be loved. So the idea is to become empty of our ideas, our beliefs, our thoughts. So the mind of Christ can give me and you and everyone his thoughts and we can think in harmony and in union with the mind of God. I just wanted to share that with you.
This has been incredibly valuable. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. It just makes me want to read the books more now. You know, Sebastian, all the time you've been sharing with us and explaining is gone beyond what I personally would expect. I don't know if other people are feeling that too. And Joe, the way you said, you know, that it is just changing everything from the past. And that past has been so important too. It's brought us to this, this now for sure. But you know, Sebastian, today I'm speaking for myself, but I might be speaking for all of us because in a way we're all so joined today. You've taken me to another, another level of, of understanding something. Like it's that real aha. And um, this, and you say, empty yourself and let the new happen. Let the new happen. Those aren't just words. There's a power in this. There's a huge energy in this, and I'm feeling it in this group today. And I thank you very much, Alice, for saying that, because yes, you are absolutely right. To be open to the new sounds wonderful and sounds so beautiful, but sometimes it's difficult. And the reason is because our mind is so attached to the past because it gives um, some sense of certainty, some sense of security. Um, last Monday, I experienced a lot of um, thoughts and ideas which were full of fear and very negative, and I couldn't understand why those thoughts and emotions came to me so um, powerfully. And um, it was like, you know, those thoughts took everything from me. I couldn't think in anything else except for that. And at, um, during the night when I was praying, Jesus said to me, because you disconnected yourself from the new. You went back to the old. The old is fear. The old is looking for security. The old is completely um, against the truth. No matter whether you found that useful or not, but you are still having the thought pattern and the emotional pattern in your soul that is still you know working there even though sometimes you don't realize that and the reason why now you are feeling that is because i need you to be aware of that to give it to me and to do what i i'm going to tell you now which means forget about everything and jump into my love and Suddenly, I thought, I saw that I just, I simply lost myself. Sometimes we lose ourselves. We miss the point. So we have the opportunity to return back. So today, during this morning, I was thinking about that and I thought, Wow, yes, it's true. I lost myself. I missed the point somehow. Um, and our Immaculate Mother Mary said to me gently, don't worry about that because you can always return back. The gate is open because in fact, there is no gate. So you can always return. So just return to me and forget about everything. And forget about everything. And this is so healing because we can be connected with the present. 
with the present of who we are, not with the future of who we are going to be or how things are going to be in the future or how things used to be in the past. This is just a mental pattern. We were created to be in union with Christ and we can be in union with Christ now. So this is an invitation to, and I would like to do this uh, if you allow me to do that, Susan, before closing this, to close our eyes just five minutes and to forget about everything and to have the experience of returning back to the house of the Father, which is here and now, and to forget about our problems, our fears, whatever we did, whatever we think, to forget about what we believe about who we are, to forget about what we believe about God, about life, about others, to believe, to forget about everything, and to close our eyes and to be just with our Immaculate Mother Mary, to let her embrace you, because she is here present, waiting for us to return to his Immaculate Heart, to return to the embrace of love. And this is something that we can do every single day in our life. And not to worry about anything, don't be afraid. There's no need to be afraid. Just remain in the embrace of love.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. It was an amazing way to end this series of Holy Encounters. And thanks everybody for being here and all your lovely contributions. And uh, we'll all be meeting again for next Wednesday for the Holy Hour of Grace and uh, the Tuesday after that at the new format of Love is What You Are. So lots of love to you all. Thanks for this thank heavenly you, time. Susan. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yes, thank you so much. And to you, Susan, for everything you've done for us. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you very much. It's been an honor. Thank you, Susan. Thank, thank you. you, Sebastian. Thank you. It was nice to be with you all. Thank you. <laughs> Hard to say goodbye, isn't it? <laughs> well, don't, don't say goodbye. <laughs> I don't need to say goodbye. I mean, I know it's late for you, but here is, you know, still we have a long time for the rest of the day. One, one thing I, I'll just quickly say is that the difference for me between the old and the new is very simple. It's like we're li the old is, is the horizontal and the new is just is is, is the vertical. It just includes everything because it's love. There's no past and no future. Hi now, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>